What's up, everybody? All right, so uh, I just got this game. It's called Dinkum, right? And so I've been uh, playing this for five, six hours or so. Uh, and I've been playing by myself a little bit and multiplayer some with some of my brothers. And uh, so one thing that I want to do, and, and there's not a lot of videos out there, is uh, kind of a tips and tricks for beginners. And me being a beginner, it, it, you know, helps. So, I've got a few things that, that if I would have known at the very beginning when I started out, it would have helped me. So, if you're looking at getting this game, I highly, highly recommend it. It's very fun. It's a very passive game. It's very fun to just play and just, just, you're bored, you kind of want something to do, but you don't want to get into something intense. This is a very cool game, and I think that this game has a a lot of potential. So, flip over here. And um, so, when you get into the game, this is what it's going to look like, of course. And I forgot the load game option because I've played a little bit. Um, multiplayer, you won't be able to play multiplayer until you start and complete your first day by yourself. So you've got to do that. Uh, once you do that, then you can open up your multiplayer and you can host the game, right? Uh, friends and invite only, that is based off of your Steam friends. So if you've got somebody that you want to play with, you have to add them on Steam as one of your friends so they can, so they can get in and play. So a couple things starting out is, of course, you're going to have to stay your first day. And the first day, you'll meet a guy named John that comes and uh, opens shop, basically, and allows you to purchase things um, <clears throat> for you to use. So you definitely want to make John stay. So the best way that I've found to make people stay is... You just constantly ask them if you, they need anything done, if uh, purchasing things from them will help, doing uh, just chatting with them will help as well. So, and that what that does is it just kind of builds a, a relationship of sorts with them so you can get them to stay. So, early game... Of course, some of the best things to do is just explore. So you'll get all of your, your base camp, right? You'll get that set up and everything put down. And then you'll be walking around, catching bugs and stuff like that. So that's one of the first things you'll get is a bug net. And some of the best things to catch would be like fireflies, um... Butterflies are pretty good. Butterflies are good. Spiders, fireflies, and dragonflies right now is what I found that, that are really worth a lot of money. And so that's good uh, good early game income, right? So catch those, and you can sell all of that to John until you get a museum. The next best thing that I found is these flowers right here. So anytime you find one of these flowers, you need to go ahead and harvest it and, and, and pick these up. They're wattle flowers. So you can pick those up and you can stack these. I've got up to, I think, 60 some before in my inventory and it doesn't create a new slot. So I can just keep going. But basically, anytime I'm going somewhere to do anything, to look, explore, I'll just run by and grab these as I go. All right. So that's very very beneficial to do that and then you could sell those and uh, make some pretty good income starting out another good thing that you'll want to do is you want to make sure you find a good food source source because everything that you do will require energy so here you've got these limes you can harvest these these bush limes you can eat these straight so you can eat these straight. They'll give you two heart points. They'll give you three energy points. If you cook these on a fire, you get four heart points and six energy. So 
if you're kind of in a pinch, you can eat these uh, raw, and it'll still boost your health up. Or if you have some time, you can go ahead and cook these, and it'll give you a little bit more. Now, you're only allowed to eat four things at a time. So if I take these, and I eat one, two, three. All right, so these are three. So there's a circle up there next to my energy bar. And once that's full, I'm not able to eat anything else. So I get this error that says too full. So I don't, I'm not able to eat anything else until that circle bar goes down. So with these bush limes, if you look in your inventory, if you hover over it, it says berry. So you see that green bar right there that says berry. So you can bury these and grow more trees. In order to do that, you've got to get a excavation license from Fletch. And that will allow you to purchase a shovel. So how you plant anything that says berry. So the bush limes berry, uh, the bananas berry, this palm tree, these, all this stuff you can bury. And what it'll allow you to do is it'll allow you to grow more trees. So you can see here, I've got a kind of an orchard started and all these come from burying <clears throat> those bush limes. So real quick, I'll show you how to do this. And this took me forever to really figure out. Um, so when you get your excavation license, you'll dig a hole. All right, so I got my hole dug. And I will take one bush lime. So if you pick up the whole stack, you can right click outside, just kind of like Minecraft. And you can right click and it'll drop one. So you see it dropped one in the hole and then you cover it over. And then you've got a bush lime tree. And so over time, this will grow and will allow you to produce more fruit. So a very, very good early tip is to get your excavation license and get bush limes and start planting these and you don't have to plant them in an orchard like i did um but i just done it for visual just kind of i don't know i'm ocd i guess and i'd rather have in a straight line so uh that's very good you plant these this these have taken about three or four days to grow to this point and they're still not ready to harvest yet so i don't know how long they'll take but Early game is good to go ahead and get a food source. Um, so <clears throat> you want to do that. Uh, same thing with apples and bananas. So I've got these planted as well. I don't have any apples on me. But you can plant apples and bananas and grow those as well. If you find those out. So make sure you get them if you find them. And... Uh, get enough to get you through until you start getting your hunting license and all that stuff to where you can get meat and then just go ahead and grow you an orchard because it's quick good food source that you can get by with uh, for the time being uh, you can cook this stuff on campfires and you see it's cooking those and then once they are done, they'll pop out just like that. And you can pick those back up. You can also cook these on a grill or a barbecue is what they're called. The earlier you can get a barbecue, the better because it'll take, it'll be a lot faster when it's cooking stuff. So uh, again, you can't eat raw meat. You need to cook it. And then the bush limes, if you cook those, it's a real good food source. One other thing about the campfires is if you walk over these, you'll catch on fire. So you want to make sure that you don't do that. And that's kind of dangerous with, uh, especially when you're cooking stuff, it's very easy to, to walk over that and, and catch on fire. So I highly recommend the barbecue. So right there, you see there's a spider. And that's a peacock spider. I think those are worth pretty good. Those are pretty rare. So you can take these in, these items in here to John. And this is what John's shop will look like once it, he builds a permanent establishment. 
probably early game he's going to have a tent. So make sure you're buying stuff from him and uh, getting him to stay. So you can talk to him and you could sell stuff. So those wildflowers, I'll just sell those just by themselves so you can see what you get from them. I've got 15 of them. So 2,000 some dinks, that's pretty good uh, starting out. So make sure you're just running and capturing those as you go especially when you're walking around and doing stuff getting resources those are very good very easy income um so another thing that you will find as you go is you will find different seeds so i've got a bush seed here and i've got fern seeds grass seeds tropical grass seeds so you can plant these as well, the seeds, except you don't have to dig a hole for these. So I'll come over here, and I've got a dirt patch here. And then if I just click, it puts grass down. So same thing with uh, the fern seeds and the bush seeds. You can put those down and catch those. I've got a garden started over here, and so I've got sugar cane, wheat, and green beans growing, but if you look, there's a little farm plot underneath those, and it'll be several days into the game, you'll get a lady that comes, and she'll allow you to purchase a hoe, but you have, so you have to buy a hoe so you can get these farm plots. And then, of course, you'll have to water these every so often. And it's pretty interesting. I found that Fletch and some of the other ones will actually water them at night after they close shop up. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool mechanic that they've got in that. So make sure that once you get that option to do that, you can go ahead and start growing a farm as well. Uh, so we've talked about tree seeds. Regular seeds, um, and then food plots, another bug. Go ahead and get that, because I don't have that one. Yep, I don't have that one. Um, again, you can sell those, good early game money as well. Or if you have the museum guy, Theodore, you can donate these to the museum. And so you can see these are blacked out or grayed out. So they've already got, he's already got these in the museum, but he doesn't have this one. So it'll ask if you want to donate it. And if you donate it, he'll give you these, I can't remember what they're called, but you use these to purchase, uh, license and deeds from fletch so you've got to have some of those as well so the more you can do that the better off you can get so you can see here you can purchase license fishing license excavation metal detecting so on and so on and once you get some some of these, it'll unlock more. So you'll see the handling and cargo tool belt. So once you start getting some of these, some more will unlock. Another good <clears throat> early game item to get is the metal detecting license. Now you won't be able to purchase a metal detector until John builds a permanent shop here. So once he builds this permanent shop, it'll allow you to purchase a metal detector. And this is very, very, very good game money, uh, especially early game. So if you can get this and get the metal detector, the best place that I have found to look for items is close to water. So you just search around. So you can see here, 
right there. Once it gets a low tone like that, it'll be you'll be close, and so and then when you get a real high tone and a big circle, then that means that you're on the target. So you have to have your excavation license as well because you've got to dig. And then you can see sometimes when they're in the water, you'll have to dive down and get them. And then you found that, and that's a shiny disc. And you can find all kinds of stuff. That one's in the water. So this was three gears. And anything like that is worth a lot of money. So gears, you can find springs, keys, uh, disc, and so on and so on. So you can find all kinds of stuff there. And it's worth some good money as well. But when you're exploring, you see those wildflowers, you just grab those. And they'll be worth some good early game money as well. Um, so once you are doing metal detecting, once you get that unlocked and you are able to metal detect, you can take all of this stuff and sell it to John. One thing that I do recommend is these shiny discs is holding on to those if at all possible. So you want to hold on to these shiny discs until you can get... Uh, I can't remember what his name is, but he'll come and he'll ask for shiny disc, basically, because essentially what he's going to do is he's going to take the disc and he's going to download all the information off of them back from the major city. And he will pay you 8,000 dinks per single disc. So you want to save those if at all possible, because that'll be a lot of money uh, up front. Now, if you come into a pinch, John will give you several thousand for them as well. But it's just worth more if you hold on to them later on uh, for, I can't remember what his name is, to come. And you can sell those discs. So you can do that. Uh, another thing is these keys, the old keys. You can sell those if you want to. They still offer a pretty good amount of money. But if you can hold on to them, it'll be better for long game scenarios supposedly the old keys will open up something within the deep mines i haven't got there yet um but you want to keep that if at all possible so you want to do that and then um and i'm sorry i just now realized that you guys have no audio as far as the game audio so my apologies on that um so yeah, keep your old keys if at all possible. You can sell them, but they're supposedly help you in the end game for the old mines and stuff like that. So, or the deep mines, so you can get more stuff. One thing that you'll notice when you come off of the dock when you first get here is this tower. And if you come up to here, this tower will allow you to put place items in it. And so i done that, thinking that maybe this was some type of radio tower or something, that it would get more people to come to the, to the island. But it doesn't do that. From what I can tell, it may, like, teleport you somewhere across the island. I don't know. But it takes a lot of resources to, to finish this. And those resources would have been very beneficial to sell and, and just get the money from them. So, and the reason that you need all of this money is every time that somebody comes to set up a permanent residence, it will put the town in debt, right? So every time you set up, build a deed, so for any of these permanent structures like this, it comes with a deed. And so what you do is you'll place uh, an item or the deed out wherever you want this building to be built at. You'll have to gather all of the resources that's required. Sometimes it's wood, sometimes it's cement, nails, all kinds of stuff. Um, so you have to gather all of those resources. Then once that is done and construction starts, the town will go into debt. 
and it starts out pretty low at first you know 25,000 50,000 and then it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going so you want to pay that off as soon as possible because you're not allowed to build anything else or do anything else as far as building your town up until you pay that debt off so you want to go ahead and pay that off as quickly as possible and that's why this these early game money tips are are really really important to get you started so the more money that you can get the better off you're going to be uh, so you can pay those debts right back off and then if somebody wants to move in then that allows you to do that so one more final tip for early game is uh to, to do some fishing so once you you can get your fishing license you can come and fish you got to make sure you catch them it wasn't very good on my part but i found that late afternoons early mornings is, is kind of the best time to fish is where there's there's more so you you don't want to just throw your line out into empty water because you're not going to get anything you want to throw it where their fish are so you can see them swimming in the water over there you want to throw those where the fish are and uh that's what's going to catch them you're not going to be able to just throw it out there randomly and catch something like that it has to actually be where where a fish is uh so when you fish <clears throat> that also is very good early game money catch this spider real quick i can catch it So, if I sell this one fish here, he'll offer me 1200 dinks for it. So, again, pretty good money for, I don't know, it took 15 20 seconds to get that. So, it's good to do that. And then I also recommend every now and then just taking a, just doing a resource gathering run. So, you grab all this stuff that you want to sell um so i'll sell the oh i'll sell the key just so you can see what it does uh you can sell bugs you can sell anything that you got stones pearls seeds anything that you've got you can sell to john and heal so you can see just for that stuff i got fifteen thousand. so it's pretty good to run and just make a resource john run so you can pick up all this stuff sell it and then you can build up your your coins so you want to be able to do that especially early game so you can keep going now i am sure that there is way more stuff here to do and and, and tips and tricks that are that are a lot better than these but these are been have been very helpful for me especially early game just because you know, I've died of hunger, I've died, I've had I've run out of energy, and, <clears throat> you know, the food is, is a very big thing. So, hopefully these help you, and as I learn more, as I play this game more, I'm only six hours in, and just started it. I mean, this is my very first time playing it. So, six hours in, I'll learn more, and I'll update these, and I'll probably issue out another video. But there's not many out there right now, so I wanted to go ahead and get you these tips and tricks out. And uh, I appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.